brain amplifier and in this video we'll try to decode this motor nameplate so throughout the video one by one we'll try to understand all these ratings what is the meaning of machine number frame kilowatt rpm efficiency volt ampere duty and all these ratings one by one so let's begin so first thing first what is machine number machine number is a unique code and it says about the manufacturer model number of that particular type of type of motor so each machine has a different and unique machine number and if you want to buy a identical spare for the same motor then it's very useful next comes the frame size the frame size is tells us about the dimensions of the motor plus what is its mounting type as per the NEMA standards so what is NEMA? NEMA is National Electrical Manufacturers Association so generally speaking if two motors have the same horsepower rating kilowatt rating speed rating and same enclosure then you can interchange them that is where frame size is used so in frame size we have prefix letters frame number and suffix letters the letters uh, the prefix letters appearing in front of the NEMA frame designation are those of the manufacturer okay they do not have any special significance in the frame design and the importance and meaning of those letter is just for the manufacturer next comes the frame number okay so if your motor is uh, rated less than one horsepower so that is called fractional horsepower motor for that the frame number will be of two digits so by dividing these two digits by 16 you can find the dimension d d is distance from the center of the drive shaft to the center bottom of the mount in inches suppose we have um, the number 56 suppose the frame number is 56 divide 56 by 4 dimensions comes out to be three and a half inches so the distance between the shaft center of the shaft to the center of the mounting is three and a half inches if your motor has rating more than one horsepower then your frame number will contain three digits so to find out the dimension from those three digits divide first two digits by four and you will find the dimension d d is distance from the center of the drive shaft to the center bottom of the mount in inches digits divide first two digits by four and you will find the dimension d the third numerical the third digit tells us about the distance between the mounting holes parallel to the base that is dimension f so if your motor do not have foot that is if the motor is flange mounted then this third digit has no significance so for example if your frame number is 145 then divide 14 by 4 it will come out to be three and a half that is dimension d okay the distance between the center of the shaft to the center of the mounting and the third digit 5 will denote distance between the mounting holes parallel to the base though the third digit do not directly tell you the dimension I mean the digit 5 is not the dimension F but it gives you information about that I mean that is not directly related to that but higher the third digit higher will be the dimension F in the suffix you may find a letter U or the letter T so EMA has three generations of standards one is pre-1952 that is called the original second is 1952 to 1964 that is indicated by the letter U and the third is 1964 to present and that is denoted by letter T so they just show the dimension standards followed which are given by NEMA also in suffix you may find letters s m and l the s denotes the motor has a short shaft it means the motor shaft 
is shorter than the shafts associated with this frame size so you can use this motor to uh, couple directly to load but uh, it is hard to use it to drive it with a belt because for that you need longer shaft and M denotes the medium shaft and the L denotes the larger shaft except this you can find the letter suffix C and D the C denotes the C face mounting that is flange mounting and D has a special type of mounting flange mounting installed that is shown in this table that is for the same speed if the horsepower or kilowatt rating is higher that means that the machine will provide more torque for the load that is you can put more mechanical load on its shaft if the rating is higher also it tells that if the machine is run at 100% load then it will consume that much kilowatt per hour as per rated one horsepower is equal to 0.746 kilowatts Next comes the speed or you can call it full load speed so the full load speed is the speed at which the rated full load torque is delivered at rated power it is given in rpm that is revolution per minute that is the motor shaft or the rotor will rotate that much revolution in one minute sometimes it is also called actual rotor speed coming the next is the efficiency so we have two kind of classification for efficiency one is EFF classification which was developed in 1998 by CMAP and the other is IE classification which was developed in 2008 EFF we have three classes EFF1 EFF2 and EFF3 EFF1 is the most energy efficient while EFF3 is the least energy efficient in this as we increase the number the energy efficiency decreases while in the IE classification we have four classes standard efficiency IE1 high efficiency IE2 premium efficiency IE3 super premium efficiency IE4 as the name suggest IE4 is the most energy efficient while IE1 is the least energy efficient so in this as we go high in number our energy efficiency increases but the scope of classification is defined for single speed single and three phase continuous duty electric motor with two four six or eight poles output range should be between 0.12 kilowatt to 1000 kilowatt the rated output voltage should be up to 1 kV and the frequency between 50 to 60 Hertz ambient temperature should be in between minus 20 degree centigrade to plus 60 degree centigrade and an altitude up to 4000 meter above sea level the difference between these two classification is based on their testing methods in EFF the stray load loss is assumed to be 0.5 percent of the total power output in IE the stray load loss is determined by indirect measurement in reality the actual stray load loss is usually higher than 0.5 percent of the total power output especially for motors of lower power so in the EFF classification the energy efficiency of the motors of lower power has been overestimated because we have constrained the straight load loss to only 0.5 percent while it is higher in lower rating motors still we can align these two quali uh, classification the motor of EFF1 could be considered as equivalent to that of IE2 and the motor of EFF2 could be considered as equivalent to that of IE1 still there will be discrepancy because of different testing methods and see in the table that as we increase the kilowatt rating the energy efficiency of IE2 EFF1 and IE1 and EFF2 is quite comparable efficiency in these motors is increased by putting more copper more steel in these motors also the more the energy efficiency more environment friendly the motor will be as a rule of thumb the motor 
energy cost is almost three times its purchase cost if it's run 24 into 7 into 365. Here we can see by this graph 15 year cost in 1000 euros and the comparison between IE1, IE2 and IE3 type of motors. As we can see in the IE3 type the purchase cost is higher the red one is purchase cost the blue one is maintenance cost and this yellow stack is of energy cost the maintenance cost in all these are same the purchase cost is increasing but if you see that the energy cost is drastically decreasing and if you compare 15 years going from ie1 to ie2 we can save 2.7 thousand of euros as well as 15 ton of co2 emission going from ie1 to ie3 we can save up to 4.6 thousand euros and 25 tons of co2 so the purchase cost is not that much significant while the energy saving is quite quite significant in these motors at 8000 operating hours per year the additional cost of an ie2 motor is paid back in just seven months while for ie3 motor it is paid back in just 10 months next comes the voltage so the data tells you at which voltage the motor is made to operate and all the nameplate parameters are defined for rated voltage and frequency be it power factor efficiency torque or current you may find a window of voltage plus minus 10 percent that means you can operate the motor in that voltage range if you go beyond that range the winding insulation may get damaged next comes the current so it tells you about the full load capacity of the motor and this data is the main part for the production because all the overcurrent and overload protection settings are done based on the current rating rating is of the full load current and it may de deviate if your phases are unbalanced or your voltage deviates